Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Paul, and here's another tournament report today. And this one's going to be uh, pretty huge because we have uh, GP Denver, London, uh, Guangzhou, and the ARG Nationals to cover. Um, so there's going to be a lot of information down in the description because we're not going to talk about um, everything from these events um, just because there's a lot of Scheherazade that is not included in this. So uh, all of you who really dislike Scheherazade, uh, congratulations. They're not, there's not a ton of it in this um, in this slideshow. So that's really good news for you. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, of course. Uh, I'm going to say that at the top of the video because it's really good for me to hear back from you guys. Uh, if you like the video and if there's things you would add to the videos or if there, you had thoughts during the videos or if you even played in some of these events and want to give some uh, give some more insight into uh, what was going through your head when you were playing the deck that you piloted, those are all really great things that um, really benefit the community. So all of that down in the, in the, the comment section and all of the lists for those who are interested um, down in the description, of course. So yeah, we're going to get right into it. So first off, I want to talk about GP uh, GP Denver. This is the one GP that we had in the United States. Um, if you did not watch our stream of it on Ruler School, uh, it's pretty recent, so go back in our video archive. Uh, there should be near the top near this video, just because it was, again, really recent. Um, there's about two days worth of coverage there, so if you're really interested in just you know putting something out in the background or even just looking at specific players play certain decks or whatever, um, that's a good place to do it. Um, there were about 56 players in Denver. Uh, 15 players were playing Sherry. There were seven Kyrix, five Lumia, three Fairer, two Ayu, two Imel, two Time Spinning Witch, and about 20 other Singleton decks. So the top list for GP Denver, uh, I'm not going to put all eight in here because most of them were Sherry. We had about seven in the top eight, um, but I'm only going to talk about uh, Zach Tufford's list today because this is probably the most anti-Sherry Sherry list um, that stays within color um, that we've seen so far. Um, there's a lot of glint and a lot of uh, thought control in the sideboard, of course, to, in order to combat the mirror. But there's also intervention of reality, which I think is really interesting. Um, it's a way of not only uh, buffing your own resonators or your, even your J ruler if you flip um, for plus six, plus six. Um, it also gets rid of additions and it also searches your deck for a resonator. Um, you should also notice that Tama is included in the list and I think it's better than Sacred Elf just because it... Um, it does uh, ping something for 200, which is really relevant, I think, in the mirror, but it also uh, draws you a card as opposed to Sacred Elf. It doesn't get as bad as long as the game goes long. Um, it's not too bad in that regard. And then, of course, uh, the null page is a thing that should stick out to you as well. Um, this is probably the one card that you want to see in the mirror, um, especially if the meta conditions are correct. If you hit the Puppet Maker, uh, your opponent's Scheherazade, uh, suddenly they don't get to play uh, their Puppet Makers anymore and maintain their advantage, um, which is a huge tempo swing uh, in your favor, especially if they can't remove it. Um, Lorite not being around a ton, you're only seeing about two copies in this list, and that's pretty standard. Um, the fact that you can't uh, lorate this trigger if you don't have it in hand is a big thing going in its favor. Um, but again, if you want to listen to more about how, how to view this card, definitely check out the Teacher's Lounge live stream that we recorded, and it's on the channel as well. So definitely check that out. There was some uh, quite a bit of discussion around this card. Um, congratulations to Zach Tufford once again for getting first, and we're going to keep going. Next up we have Terry Lamberson. And they are the only Carrick player that made it into the top eight. So, uh, <laughs> so that's saying something. Um, immediately, this list looks a little bit different than the standard Orthodox Carrick that we've seen so far. Um, we're seeing more pig squadrons and less Pialis and ground and air supremacy, which is definitely a shift. Um, but we're also seeing Welser the Archmage of Fire included in the main deck, which is, you know, admittedly a pretty decent addition considering you can double up on your high speeds for additional damage, uh, Pathway Part to get rid of additional resonators or bounce them, uh, burn them, whatever. And then, of course, uh, having Sender and Dragon Palm deals 800 instead of just 400 to your opponent's face or even just a straight 10 to a resonator. So this card actually has a lot of... Um, 
a lot of utility in this list and I think it's pretty cool to see it. Um, in addition to that, you're going to see power spike in the sideboard, and this is just a way for you to um, deal 1,200 damage to your opponent at the for the cost of the will, as well as five strength counters. Um, and it's just a way of closing out the game, and I think that's pretty cool. And uh, of course, Blood Boil is also just a, a common aggro tool that Red will use in order to deal uh, a ton of damage, or even just deal six uh, without making your opponent... Um, without allowing your opponent to to heal, which is sometimes relevant, but it's mostly used for the aggro package. Um, so yeah, congratulations to Terry Lamberson. Um, they got seventh place um, in Denver, and that's pretty great in my opinion, because we don't see a lot of Kyrie in the top eight of that event, so uh, congratulations. All right, next up we're gonna talk about GP Guangzhou. Uh, this uh, event happened a while ago, but we only got the list like late last week. Um, right around this time last week is actually when we got these lists. So this is a couple weeks old by now, but it is something that I think we could talk about um, just because this was the Asian Championships. Um, this is the ruler breakdown that they were able to provide. Um, I found this on, uh, I think it was Force of Will Taiwan. So we're, we're assuming that these are the, uh, the Asian uh, playoffs ruler breakdowns. So just keep that in mind. Um, I wasn't able to figure out exactly whether or not these were, but this is this is our assumption anyway. Um, there were 15 Shahrazads at the event, eight Lumias, um, an Imol, or two sorry, two Imols, two Mikage, which we haven't seen a lot of Mikage since uh, the release of Last Days of the Powerless Dragonoid, and then of course all of these Singleton rulers, uh, including Time Spinning Witch, they just used Kage as art for this uh, for this chunk of the pie. Next up, we're gonna have the uh, the top deck list for this event. Uh, again, most of these were Scheherazade, but there were some notable differences, uh, including a Time Spinning Witch that made it all the way to first place and actually won the event. Um, they splashed white for the use of um, Light of Transmigration, and uh, I forget, <laughs> Um, Dreams of Flight is the card, excuse me, I couldn't think of the name right away. Um, but most of this is just to uh, make sure that your uh, Mosasaurus gets through in terms of damage, as well as being able to flicker it for additional um, additional freezes of your opponent's stones. And then of course Dawn of the Earth has always been a good card, and the fact that the deck gets to use that is pretty great. Um, and this is a pretty standard time spending witch list. Um, it's definitely more uh, ramping and more control oriented in that sense. Um, but of course, if you look in the sideboard, which I think is a really cool um, sideboard package, you have uh, Rachel's Millennia Bonds, uh, Frig to recycle all of your different stuff, Null Page to remove things again, like we've just re recently talked about. And then of course, they have a couple of uh, additional uh, Misty Wind Magic Stones, I believe that's the correct name, just a side in in case you need uh, more uh, green, I guess, is kind of what they were thinking. And they only ran three Time Stones, which I thought was interesting, but of course, if you have accessible Time Will pretty much all the time, um, I, I think that's probably fine. Um, I haven't played the deck too much myself, but that's kind of what they were going for. Um, so congratulations to this player. Uh, we actually don't have their name, unfortunately, but congratulations to them for actually winning the tournament with Time Spending Witch. It's really refreshing to see. It's not Shahrazad. And then, of course, uh, the the hallmark of uh, the, the Asian meta seems to be a lot of Lumia. Um, and this list does something interesting. It kind of goes in between um, using Ataractia as a way of uh, bringing out things like Blazer, um, and Rachel's to do uh, additional effects and having them flicker right away on the turn they come out. But then also does things with Faley combo um, with, with Umir and uh, Valentina epic story, uh, I'm sorry, epic, a heroic epic for the thousandth night uh, to flash in your Umirs and stuff like that. So it's really interesting how this list is very flexible. Um, and I find that really interesting, honestly. Um, so congratulations for this player for cracking into the top eight. Um, and those are really the only uh, Guangzhou lists that I thought were uh, that were worth talking about. Most of them were just Shahrazad lists that are, you know, either running a combination of a traditional list, traditional coloring, or they were running uh, white or blue as a way of uh, counteracting different um, different different decks they were going to see in the meta. So that's really all that I really saw in that. And so we're just going to keep moving. Next up, uh, we had GP London. This is notably a Wanderer format tournament. Um, not a 
ton of people showed up to this, but it is one of the, the other Wanderer events that we've had in the last uh, several months. So like I said, we're only 13 players, uh, 7 players are playing Lumia, uh, 2 were playing Kyrick, there was a Gil, Farer, Zero, and Imo player. And uh, I think it's pretty interesting because this Farer actually uh, won the event, and we're going to see that here pretty quick. Um, again, this is a Wanderer format. Um, I'm going to actually li link all of the lists for this event down in the comment section down below. Uh, some of these uh, lists were actually in German. And so you can kind of get a sense of like what the cards are because some of the words are very similar to our English words. Um, but it was kind of hard for me to figure out what exactly some of those cards were um, in order to get this report out to you guys. So just kind of take that with a grain of sand. All right, so the winner of GP London was Benjamin Bargetzi. Uh, he wanted me to include his deck title, uh, which was Reclaim the Throne, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a decent name. Uh, anyway, so he actually won this uh, tournament with a Gwyber Fairer list. Um, and as you can see, it has a lot of different resonators that you can use. They're all pretty low cost. Um, and a lot of these other um, Grim Cluster cards, I'm actually going to put up on the screen as I begin talking about them. And then he also had some comments that I wanted to kind of go over, and I'll kind of read them out loud to you guys just a little bit, just to kind of give you a sense of where he thought this deck could go, especially if we get more, um, if we get more Wanderer lists, this is going to be really great. So, uh, first up we have uh, three Elvish Priests. This is basically... Uh, Sacred Elf 1.0, um, just a 1-4 that floats a green, so that's pretty much it. Um, Spirit Caller Elf, the uh, Lorites, of course, uh, Melfi, and then we had a, uh, I'm just looking at these, excuse me. Um, we had Christy, the Warden of Sanctuary, and it's interesting because, uh, and you're going to see this on screen right now, um, it pretty much gives all of your other elves barrier, which is pretty great. Um, and then if you rest five of those elves you can gain 500 life and draw two cards so it's it's an interesting little draw package especially if you do it before recovery and you have all of these elves that are just sort of recovered you can um just gain, gain a little bit of life gain some cards but then all of your other elves just have this um this barrier effect which is really 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 cool uh, of course a uh, commander in the crowd is also uh, another uh typical fair staple Next we have a uh, Fina, the Silver Player, a couple copies of that. It's a three drop, and of course you're going to see this on the screen as well, but I just want to give you an idea of what this is all about. Um, so this first continuous effect isn't really relevant because you're playing Fairer, but its second is that uh, it just buffs all of your elves, all of your other elves, by plus four, plus four, which is pretty relevant if I'm being completely honest and if you get a couple of these on board suddenly they're eight eights themselves and then they buff all of your board uh plus eight plus eight which is pretty kind of I don't even know that's just crazy to think about uh honestly and then of course you have Cecil and Tia to untap stones uh Gwyber is the main win condition of the deck outside of Fairer himself and if you played a card uh or if you played a resonator this turn and it sticks on the field um, this card goes down uh, two Void Will and Cost for um, for each Resonator you put into the field this turn. Um, and so then it becomes a one-drop white Resonator, 12-12 Flyer. It's ridiculous. Uh, this card is something you don't see in New Frontiers anymore because it was printed in Alice Cluster. So just keep that in mind, but this is one of those cards that is always going to be... Um, um, it's always going to be relevant in, uh, in Wanderer until we get something that just means that... <laughs> Uh, it just can't be played anymore. Of course, uh, three Wall of Wind, two High Speed Dash to flip your uh, favor back over, four Altars to just ramp into a bunch of stones, four Seal of Wind and Light to negate stuff, and then of course three Final Battle to wipe the board. And then as we move into the sideboard, we have a third Christie, and then we have Elvish Bowman to get rid of additions, Zeke's to buff your board even more, negate summon spells, recycle your graveyard, etc. One Ruin Story for additional removal, Keen Sense, uh, a couple of the last days of a powerless Dragonoid. Uh, Amon Sewell is also down here. Um, this is a way for your elves to block flyers, like opposing uh, Gwybers or even just anything else with flying. And then, of course, uh, each of your elf J resonators gets plus two defense, which is pretty great. Um, 
And then of course, uh, the other effect that I completely forget every time is Dear Resonators, your opponent controls with flying cannot attack your Resonators. So there's a huge downside to playing flyers against this particular deck, especially games two and three. Um, so this deck is pretty cool. Um, he said uh, a lot of different things that he would improve are to move to Sacred Elf because uh, Sacred Elf is 200 attack, so your opponent cannot just run into it with a Tama and then shoot 200 damage, um, which is super important as the decks um, that can actually beat you is uh, Lumia, is what he's saying, um, and, a, and a few other things, and B, something like Dark Tree or RR Control. Um, so you would definitely take these out for uh, Sacred Elves, and then of course he's saying you could probably add a fourth Gwyber, and that's really it. And he's like, he's just hoping that everyone has fun with the deck. So thanks to Benjamin Bargetzi for um, for for playing this deck. Ooh, look at that, something from off screen. Um, and uh, congratulations for winning the whole tournament. That's pretty great. All right, next up we're gonna do the ruler breakdown for ARG Nationals. Uh, there were about 70 players who attended, 22 were playing Sherry, 13 were playing Lumia, there were 7 times spinning Witch, 6 Kyrix, 5 Imels, 5 Gills, 4 Ayu, 4 Favor, and then about 5 other rulers that were also present. Um, so these top 10, uh, these top 10, wow, these top deck lists for uh, the ARG, a lot of Sherry's are not included in this, of course, just like the rest, um, but we did include uh, Michael Aguilar's because he actually won the tournament. And uh, this looks really similar to uh, standard Scheherazade lists. I mean, you're seeing the two uh, Inheritor of the Stars go Lapis and the Shades, as well as uh, Thought Control as a way of managing yourself in the mirror. And then Winds of Salvation is another card that is going to be uh, popping up in more green decks, especially going forward, because it's a really strong cancel that just removes something from the chase when it's played. Um, the standard thing you're going to see in a lot of the lists, especially the ones down below, are the uh, sighting of the four gusting skies to move into a uh, miscalculation package that uh, stops aggro in its tracks and does other stuff against other decks that want to attack you a lot. Um, and this is just a way for Scheherazade to continue to do what it wants to do without having to worry so much about um, highly aggressive decks disrupting its tempo. In seventh place was Andrew Schroeder, who um, who played a really similar deck to uh, the the last uh, Kyrick deck that we saw um, before, because they're running the the Power Spike and of course the uh, couple of Archmage of Fire, just to uh, double up on all their spells. Um, the big difference is in the sideboard. There was a few different cards that uh, I think are worth mentioning. Of course, a, a Kame is an old school uh, ACN. Uh, card that uh, didn't see a lot of play uh, after we got things like Otherworld Dreams and especially like Lorate has always been a concern, but playing it in the sideboard I think is pretty good, especially if you're not anticipating that your opponent is going to be playing their Lorates. Um, Firebird for uh, if you remove the strength counters for it, it's unchaseable and it's a, it's a straight up 600 damage that's really solid. Uh, Viola Treacherous Maiden is actually a card I think we're going to see a lot more of, especially because it's basically doll audience with more buff effects, and of course it has the ability to remove things from your uh, from either graveyard to cards, which I think is pretty useful. Arrow Trap for uh, other decks that are using uh, things like Sylvia or Paella to deal damage, it's able to do stuff like uh, 600 damage, or if it's a flyer, 1200, so that's pretty relevant. Lightning Strike for an additional 1000 damage that you can bring in at any point you want, and Destruction of the Portal just for additional uh, additional addition removal. It's a little redundant, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, congratulations to uh, Andrew for doing that, uh, for getting 7th place at Nats. And then we're going to be talking about Justin Klinger's list, who um, was the only Time Spinning Witch in the top. Um, time Spinning Witch is still one of those decks that I think you're going to want to be watching out for, especially because um, the the cluster meta that we have currently um, has Time Spinning Witch near the top. I don't know if it's the best deck. Gil or um, Scheherazade are probably the top two decks. This one might be um, a close... Um, a close third in that regard. Um, that's the way I'm kind of looking at it. They played um, a lot of interesting cards. We're losing Sha Wu Jing, which I think is really sad. I think this card is actually pretty good. Um, unfortunately, it's rotating, so uh, you don't get to do things like 
uh, tax your opponent for playing chance, uh, unfortunately. But uh, Red Leaf is also an interesting card. Um, I'm wondering exactly why this card was included, um, unless they had like a very specific reason. I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Um, so if you're able to and you're listening to this, uh, comment down below as to why you ran uh, Red Leaf. I think it's really interesting um, that this card is included. Um, but of course they're playing uh, Inherit of the Stars, Gil Lapis as well, and the uh, the one copy of Alice, Girl of the Blue Planet, because you can reuse her God's Art and uh, prohibit things from uh, hitting the field. Um, kind of like a null page, but something from Echoes of the New World in this uh, in past Lapis cluster. Um, they're running a little bit of black, so you can play things like Ray the Black Owl on the sideboard. And then uh, they're playing another Red Leaf and the Dino Rider in the side as well. Dino Rider is pretty great because if you're able to land and kill something, uh, you're able to just uh, run train. And this thing is really hard to get rid of sometimes. So uh, congratulations for Justin getting top 8 with this list. I think it's really cool that we're seeing Time Spinning Witch finally crack in a little bit, even though we're in a very Scheherazade-saturated meta. It's really good to see this. So now, uh, as we do in every other video, uh, we do my thoughts. And I think what the main thing I want to talk about today is that this is kind of the meta as it's shaping up. And, it, you know, this is something I've talked about in the past, of course, but I want to talk about this stuff in the context of uh, New Valhalla. So New Valhalla, we've seen about five of the rulers at the point of this video being made. We've seen Adam Seikart, we've seen uh, Fu Shi, uh, King of Kun Lun, we've seen Arthur, um, from, from Sky Round, uh, Chimimi, and of course we've seen Lucifer. And uh, a lot of the commentary that I've been hearing lately is that it doesn't seem like any of the runes so far, or even any of the cards that are coming out, are really going to challenge this set of rulers all that much. Um, excuse me. Um, Time Spinning Witch and Gil are pretty well established decks, especially in Cluster right now. And then of course there's just the aggro. Um, I want to say B tier of tier one, um, that is uh, a tier within a tier, I guess I want to say, is the aggro tier is um, the thing that challenges all of these control decks and pushes these decks to the limit in order to, um, uh, to try and get into a top spot. So these lists overall, I think, are the lists that we're going to have to be looking at in terms of how do the new Valhalla rulers stack up in terms of their support? Of course, uh, all of the support, the generic support for um, new Valhalla is, is there, but it's also coming from uh, Rhea Cluster. So Rhea Cluster stuff will be able to benefit these new rulers in some way. Um, but in terms of, you know, <laughs> what, what card could they print for these other rulers to be competitive uh, compared to the Rhea Cluster um, do, uh line up here i'm not really sure but i'm definitely not saying it's impossible for these rulers to do some stuff i'm really kind of looking at adam sidecart more um i think he has the potential to do some some really good stuff and of course blue is getting some ridiculous support and if you don't know what i'm talking about um just go over to the force of will database and just take a look at all the blue stuff that we, we've recently gotten um it's pretty decent stuff it might actually i don't i don't i haven't done any play testing with that stuff i have no idea this is just me to sort of like taking a shot in the dark, um, but I think white and blue stuff going forward might have some potential to, to challenge these rulers. Speaking of new Valhalla, what's your favorite new ruler that we've seen so far? Um, as of the recording of this video, we still have um, a couple of, well, all of the runes for uh, Chimimi and Lucifer to see, but we also haven't seen the other five rulers that are going to be in the cluster for us to use. Um, but which one is your favorite so far? And, you know, maybe you've just seen the art of the other rulers and those are cool too. That's also fine. Comment down below with what you think. Don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe so you get more content like this in the future. And of course, this has been Paul, and I'll catch you uh, next weekend as we talk about GP Munich. Bye.